So today we're going to look at a process known as fermentation. But before we get into the details and the equations, I want you to take a look at a video because fermentation is something that's actually probably pretty important to you. So observe what's happening in this video. So if you're familiar with baking, you might know what this process is. In this process, something known as yeast, which is found in bread um, and other types of bakery products, uh, the yeast is actually being activated. It's being woken up from its dormant state, and the yeast is actually undergoing a process known as fermentation, where it's producing a lot of carbon dioxide, and you can see those bubbles forming. And the yeast is also in its active state, so it's reproducing, dividing, and it's, it's growing. So this is something that has to take place before you can start to um, make bread. You need to activate the yeast. You need to wake it up. Once that happens and your yeast is nice and active, and you activate it typically by adding warm water and sugar. So once the yeast is activated, it can be mixed in with other ingredients, and you can start to produce bread. And you can see once the bread dough is mixed, that dough actually continues to rise because fermentation is still occurring. The yeast is still active. It's undergoing this process of fermentation. And during fermentation, um, the yeast is actually producing carbon dioxide bubbles. And this network of bubbles gets trapped inside of the bread dough and causes the dough to rise and become nice and fluffy and um, give it that characteristic um, shape and texture that bread has. And you can see the dough here rising. And then just so you know, we can finish out the process, um, there it is. The bread is actually baking in the oven. And eventually the yeast dies because it can't survive in the oven. But by that point, it's nice and fluffy, not a dense, rock-solid, um, inedible mass that it would otherwise be without the yeast. So, that being said, now we're going to get into the details of fermentation. And to do that, we're going to go back to last class when we learned about cellular respiration. We know cellular respiration is how organisms get energy out of sugar, how they break apart the sugar to get the energy out of it. We also know that cellular respiration happens in steps. And these are the three steps we learned about glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. And what's important to know is that some of these steps require oxygen and some don't. So glycolysis is the only one of these three steps that's anaerobic, meaning it needs no oxygen. The Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain both require oxygen. So the question here that I want to ask you is, what happens if oxygen is unavailable? What if there isn't enough oxygen or there isn't any oxygen? What occurs? So um, what actually can happen is glycolysis because glycolysis is anaerobic, just like we said in the previous slide. And if you remember, in glycolysis, you start with a six-carbon sugar, which is glucose, right? It's got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And at the end of glycolysis, we basically break apart that glucose into two pyruvates, two three-carbon sugars. And in this process, we get two beautiful, shiny new ATPs, which can then be used for energy inside of your cells. Um, however... Uh, glycolysis needs some material so that it can run, and it can't run forever. You run out of the raw materials needed for glycolysis, and that is why we enter the other processes. We enter Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. So what happens if we're doing glycolysis, we run out of materials, and we can't enter the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain because there is no oxygen? So that is what brings us to fermentation. Fermentation is a process that allows glycolysis to continue when oxygen is unavailable. So it's going to resupply the stuff that glycolysis needs so that it can keep running and making those two ATP and making another two ATP and making another two ATP so that you can continue to break apart sugar and get energy out of it. The specific molecule that glycolysis starts running out of is this NAD+. And during fermentation, we're going to make more NAD plus that can be used in glycolysis. And then the glycolysis itself can continue to make ATP for your cells. So that's fermentation in a nutshell. And you can see fermentation down here in these little pictures. Um, the one on the left is known as lactic acid fermentation, which we're going to take a look at. 
and the one on the right is known as alcoholic fermentation. And the point that you need to see here is it allows glycolysis, glycolysis right here, it allows glycolysis to continue. So it allows us to break apart glucose and get two ATP out of it. Um, and it does this by giving these NADP plus, NAD, sorry, NAD plus molecules back into glycolysis. These NAD plus molecules back into glycolysis, allowing glycolysis to continue so you don't have to go to the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. So where on earth would this fermentation process happen? And it turns out that fermentation takes place inside of our bodies, for example. So when you're working out really intensely in high intensity, very strenuous exercises like these athletes here, like this high hurdler or these sprinters down here, um, you're putting such a strain on your body that your respiratory system where you're taking in oxygen in your lungs and your cardiovascular system where your um, blood is trying to get the oxygen to your body, they can't carry the oxygen fast enough to get to your muscle cells um, to maintain aerobic respiration. Because remember, aerobic respiration needs the oxygen. If you're putting such a strain, you're doing such high intensity work, you can't get enough oxygen to your cells. So what your body does is it enters lactic acid fermentation, right? After glycolysis, it's going to do this lactic acid fermentation thing so that you can continue um, supplying ATP to your cells, which are working really hard at this point. Lactic acid fermentation can occur for one to three minutes, and then basically something known as lactic acid starts to build up in your muscles, and eventually you can't continue this, and your muscles kind of can't perform at this intensity. That's why sprinters can't go at their top speed forever. They can only do it for a short time. And you've probably felt lactic acid fermentation in your body before, it's that burning sensation that you feel after a, after a really hard workout or, your, or that muscle fatigue where your muscles are really tired and they feel like they're burning. That's lactic acid fermentation. That's a byproduct of that process. It's, you can feel the lactic acid building up in your system and that's what you're feeling. So looking at lactic acid fermentation, here's the beautiful equation. It begins with pyruvate, not sugar, because remember, glycolysis broke apart our glucose into pyruvate. So it begins with pyruvate and NADH, and what you get out of it on the right side, so this is the product, you get lactic acid, which is actually toxic to us. So we can't tolerate very high levels of lactic acid, which is why we can't continue um, running at top speed forever. And we also produce NAD+. And that NAD+, is going to go back into glycolysis and keep glycolysis running so that you can do this for one to three minutes. Okay, so this is lactic acid formation, uh, fermentation, and it happens inside of our bodies. Top-notch athletes have higher um, thresholds for lactic acid. They can tolerate more and keep going, whereas people like me, for example, I'm not a um, very experienced athlete, I wouldn't be able to run at my top speed for as long. Okay. Now, the second type of fermentation is known as alcoholic fermentation, and this is used by yeast and bacteria. So we saw the yeast in the beginning um, when we were trying to make bread. Um, that yeast undergoes alcoholic fermentation. In this process, uh, not lactic acid is produced, but alcohol is produced instead, and that's in the form of ethanol. Also, we are still going to be making this NAD+, which is going to go back and allow glycolysis to keep running. So alcoholic fermentation is actually used to make different types of foods that people eat, and one of them, of course, is the bread that you saw in the beginning. But here are some other uses of fermentation in foods and the different types of organisms that perform that type of fermentation. So it all begins with glucose, right? And we break glucose into pyruvate through glycolysis, and then fermentation is going to take over and keep giving raw ingredients back to glycolysis. But here are the different types of organisms. So you have bacteria that can perform fermentation, and here is one type of bacteria that gives us soy sauce, for example. Soy sauce is a fermented food. And the lactobacillus here is going to give us foods like cheese and yogurt. Those are also fermented foods that you probably eat each day. And then here you have um, fungi, a specific type of fungi that does fermentation for us and it can produce different types of things. For example, the bread, the carbon dioxide that is produced during this alcoholic fermentation will cause the bread to rise. Um, wine, 
is also made through fermentation and then beer as well. So fermentation is not just useful in our bodies, allowing us to perform at high levels, but it also allows us to um, make many types of food that we eat in our daily lives. Okay, so here's a quick recap of what we've been learning about. There's three big processes, photosynthesis, respiration, and fermentation. And it can seem a little bit overwhelming and it a little bit complex, actually very complex, and it's actually even more complex than I've showed you in these videos. You can go infinitely deeper and learn more details and more names of processes and look into it in greater depth. But the important thing is not to get lost in all the details and to keep your eye on the big picture. So photosynthesis occurs inside of producers like plants and, and some types of bacteria and algae and kelp. And what happens and the whole point of photosynthesis is to take something like carbon dioxide and to take water, so a gas and a liquid, and use energy from the sun to make food, to make sugar. And as a result of this process, um, oxygen is also produced, which is very important to us. So the whole point of photosynthesis is for producers to be able to make sugar. Now, the next process we learned about was cellular respiration, and it seemed very complicated, but the whole point of cellular respiration is to take that sugar and get the energy out of it. And that energy is in the form of ATP. ATP is what our cells use for energy. It's the energy currency of the cell. So what's the point of respiration? It's to burn that sugar using oxygen to get the energy out of it so that our cells can do work for us, okay? Now, fermentation goes along with respiration as well. And fermentation is just how we break apart sugar when oxygen is not available in the process, right? So from glycolysis, can't go into Krebs and can't go into electron transport chain, we can go into fermentation and we can keep glycolysis running. So fermentation is another way to get energy out of sugar so that our cells can do work. So I really hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.